Sutra and the fifth sutra and the third sutra we have started the discussion of Maya. So Maya has different forms. So one of them is Avarana, the concealing power of Maya. The delusive power, so that is also considered as power. Even ignorance is the power of Maya. So moha avarana tatsiddhi. So the same thing is continuing in the next sutra. Moha jaya dananda bhoga sahaja vidya jaya. Jaya Dhananda Bhoga Sahaja Vidya Jaya So the Moha is uh, like uh, delusion or darkness, is ignorance. So Moha Jaya Jaya means conquest of Moha, the delusion of mind, the Moha Jaya, Ananda Abhoka, unlimited enjoyment, that is the state of enjoyment we have when we go before or go beyond the uh, limitation of this creation that is like we have a daily experience of deep sleep so in deep sleep uh, there is no objects worldly objects are not there so that is also we hear the moha jaya there the ignorance is there because the experience we have uh, there it is actually the the nature of our own self because without mind, whenever we have some experience without mind, so that is the self experience. But here, moha jayat, because ignorance makes all these limitations. So then, beyond that, moha jayat, ananda abhoga. So abhoga here it is. An enjoyment generally is called Abhoga, Ananda Bhoga. So Sahaja Vidya Jayaha, how it is achieved that state is called Sahaja Vidya. Sahaja means self. The word meaning Sahaja means something which is inborn. It is called Sahaja. Inherent, inborn. So, Sahaja Vidya Jayaga. Now, what is this Sahaja Vidya? Sahaja Vidya is the knowledge inborn. It means the self knowledge. So, there, here we have so many technical terms, different terms. So, this Sahaja Vidya is called Unmana Vastha. Unmani in this uh, philosophy. So, Unmani. Unmani means beyond mind. So whatever experience we have beyond mind is called Sahaja. So we have Sahaja meditation, Sahaja dhyana, Sahaja vidya, 
and Sahaja Ananda, so there are so many religious scholars, uh, without any medium or without any means, so what you have directly have is called Sahaja. So, Sahaja Vidya Jaya. So when this uh, knowledge is achieved, the Sahaja Vidya, Ummani Bhava, then there is full of happiness, that is what it says. So this is uh, what we discuss in Vedanta and all other philosophy. Uh, the ignorance is removed by knowledge and when the knowledge comes and ignorance is removed, so you are with yourself and that is the ultimate experience of happiness as we have in deep sleep. It's just an experience we have. Now, here the difference between Mohavarana and this Mohajaya. So, Mohavarana is uh, the illusion of Maya, where no discrimination or no correct knowledge is there. Now, after this, we have correct knowledge, the knowledge of self is there, therefore, this Sahaja Vidya Jaya. When we uh, practice this sadhana in some level of experience, it, uh, there is disappearance of ignorance. It means in, when we do some meditation or japa or some sadhana, we have some inner experience or inner bliss experience. And then we, we continue with that, then the mind slowly take it as its natural. So whenever mind needs to uh, take that experience, so it takes that experience and in between it comes. Sometimes it comes and sometimes it goes. There is no continuity. Slowly we increase and then the uh, there is continuous as, uh, connection with those experiences. The memory will continue. Then the last stage comes where the sadhaka will always have that experience continue, the constant experience of that. So this is called the sahaja avastha. But this sahaja avastha is based on the sanskaras, what we call the impressions, what we already practiced. So the strength of sadhana or strength of any practice is based on the impression made out of that, that we know. If we have a stronger impression, sanskaras, then the sadhana is also stronger. It will continue easily. So, effortlessly you can do it. So, whatever you can practice effortlessly, it means you have a good samskara of that. But, after uh, pra all this practice, this moha samskara, because we were, this ignorance, uh, the, uh, the moha, the delusion, or the, or the the sanskara of ignorance that is also there because in some level of some level we were having that and for a long time we were experiencing those so the strong samskaras of ignorance is also there so it maintain and keep this sahaja avastha sahaja vidya one should remove the samskaras also the samskaras of that ignorance. Why that is so? If you get a good uh, no, experience of sadhana, maybe for one week or one month, it can again go if the samskaras are there. The mind will change. Therefore, in our life when we see we can Remember, 
one, one point of time we were interested in one subject and another point of time we were interested in another subject and the previous subject was completely forgotten and the new subject was taken and it, it goes like that no continue the same thing would happen here also so when we practice for some time okay it is supportive mind is supportive then you will have this feelings but after after that uh, period of time again the mind can change therefore the real sadhaka will concentrate on removing the previous samskaras or changing the samskaras he will not allow to appear the old samskaras so that is the sahaja avastha the establishment of sahaja avastha <coughs> so in uh, yoga sutra there is a sutra in the second chapter avidya asmita raga desha abhinivesha these are called the pancha kleshas after that the sutra comes avidya kshetra uttaresham prasupta tanu vichinna udarana there it is said this avidya avidya means ignorance avidya so this avidya is the cause or the ground for all those avidya kshetra uttaresham prasupta tanu vichinna udara it says the samskaras of this pancha kleshas because pancha kleshas are making all this uh, problem so the pancha kleshas are that is the last the uh, object of you know, removal or object of this so we have to remove them now this avidya is the background or the field for all other and then even until the avidya is there the other samskaras will come in between appear and disappear so in one stage this prasupta we don't know what samskara we have like a child when we see we don't know uh, what samskara the child has and how the child is going to be but after that it will appear in the, with the as the child grows it can appear here the prasupta avastha it is called the prasupta avastha the samskaras are in sleepy mood or that stage we don't know what is happening there so what we think oh that samskaras are not there god we may think that like that but it is not so those samskaras are still there and sleeping so called prasupta then the second uh, stage that is tamu avastha the previously it was strong uh, strong desires with uh, strong emotions now those are not very strong but it comes in between very slight very uh, weak with weak emotions slightly appears and goes that is called tanu avastha so what does it mean even though it is very weak but it has not that still it is there it is appearing in different form then it comes vichinna so vichinna means like i said sometimes it appears sometimes this appears sometimes you go oh, it is there you know that god you are all now interested in those samskaras but still we cannot believe them so these are all there in mind at the fourth form is udara udara means clearly appearing as all this prasupta tanu vichinna udara therefore this moha is also like that if you want to overcome this moha you have to remove the samskaras of 
मौका तो लेट बी मिनिमम फॉर हास और दस हजार आवास का प्रैक्टिस नाउ इफ दिस सहज अवस्था इज एस्टैब्लिश्ड तो इट मींस वन एवर यू वांट टू बी विथ योर सेल्फ यू कैन कंप्लीटली टर्न योर माइंड इनटू दैट स्टेज सो द मेडिटेशन कैन हैपन एनी टाइम वन एवर यू लाइक टू मेडिटेट एंड देयर इज नो effort to effort less we can do it no special practice is needed in any situation any condition it can come you just close the eyes and think about the, the self so the meditation will happen so this is uh, a practice normally we should do that is called sahaja practice so after uh, a uh, long practice once you are established in this sahaja avastha the all world will appear like in the last uh, last part we have seen a sukha a sapna like a dream the world will be the object of the mind object of the seer so this separation of subject and object will be experienced so this is called uh so withdrawing of mind the so inward mind now mind is fully with uh, the inner objects so outer objects whatever we experience is not uh, the interest of mind sees the object outside but as we know when we feel sleepy We don't want to see anything. We want to sleep. Similarly, mind wants to take the meditation, and it doesn't want to go outside. If at all it opens the eyes, immediately stir back to meditation because the mind has experienced the taste of meditation. So this stage is uh, described here at the next sutra. जाग्रद्वितीयक जाग्रत सो वेकिंग इन द माइंड और वेकिंग इन द कॉन्शियसनेस सो नाउ द साधक इज नॉट वेकिंग आउटसाइड इज वेकिंग इन साइड सो Wake it in the consciousness. So this, uh, this uh, when we practice for a long time, uh, you can experience this. This is not something, uh, no city or something like that. It's a, it's a mind. When we practice, the mind gets this interest. And it doesn't want to go outside and not take the object. Always be inside. So that is jagrat. So we have a normal jagrat as waking state. Uh, now we are interested in waking state because waking state is giving uh various experiences uh, objects and uh, our all interest is with waking state we are not interested in uh, dream or other state but uh, in this case the jagrat the waking state will be in consciousness so this is a experience of unmani avastha as a sort of sahaja avastha this is also an experience of unmani avastha so jagrat in the back in that state dudiya karaha the world become second second means an object so the subject is the meditator the sadhaka or the sak the sakshi and the the second the as object the world become the object So, Vidya Kara, the world is made as second. But this Vidya Kara has word meaning. Uh, <coughs> so, what he is translating is uh, totally different. <laughs> We have nothing to do with it. I mean, there is no connection. Taking is the doer of forming the second part of anything. It doesn't mean anything. 
జాగ్ర ద్వితీయకర సో దిస్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ as i said all these sutras has some connection with our own experience so what if you have some idea about it then only you can understand the sutra so the sutra will not directly communicate anything so if you directly translate you will not get any yeah, meaning like what he is translating here even the sentence is not correct no there is not nothing is communicated so jagrat didiya karaha so this is uh, when we are uh, like uh, in another uh, experience we can take the our own experience when we are moved out uh, the way we feel uh, not to uh, we don't want to do anything so that time also we withdraw from there and we sit in the room and try to as we do or like that so the same thing will happen to you more the way it is moved so we uh, normally we say he is in meditative mood so the meditative mood is like this we take the object outside and we leave it inside so then whatever happens in that consciousness in that mind that is described in all uh, the, the next three sutras nartakah atma now this self become an actor in relation with the world so nartakah atma he is only an actor on the world or uh, like an actor do so when what actor does he knows the story what should be an actor and then we practice that act that but here he knows the he knows the self as his self what he is and then when the mind is there for action he takes the mind and then do that so what he feels i am not doing anything but with the mind i am doing all this this is nartaka nartaka means actor dancer so he become uh, an actor or a dancer in this uh, practice so you will feel that inside and do all these things this is this is also very famous in uh, vedanta after knowing, knowing the self uh, the practitioner the sadhaka would feel himself out of the world the world is a stage of drama for him so so nataka we say nataka so the everything he sees as he is seeing a, a film or a drama so like that he will see it and experience it so not attach himself to whatever is happening even in his mind if something comes you take it very easy so nothing is connected to it so the objects and the emotions will appear and disappear he will be withdrawn from that is for sattaka atma and in this stage of drama who are the uh, subject what is the subject so ranga nanas sutra comes rango andar atma rango andar atma rango andar atma here the inner self andar atma inner self is the stage of action ranga hami stage where the actor acts drama and all those so the antaratman antaratma is ranka here the inner self of the uh, subtle body or that we can say the uh, self inside it is not the consciousness itself but the self inside who is aware about the objects in the mind 
So that self is the stage itself. So there this drama is enacted. The Rengo Andaratma. So when we sit for meditation or contemplation, we can see the memory comes one after another. And then we observe of observe of all all of those uh, objects there. Like seeing somebody is bringing the objects there one after another. Sometimes we are interested in those objects, sometimes not. If we are bringing, if we have, if we can bring the objects, then we would only bring interested objects. But everything is appearing in front of us. So this is the drama here. Now what we should do when we have this? So we should let it come and go. Don't be worried about it or attached to any of those actions. So let the uh, forms come and go. Don't uh, react to it. So then what happened? After some time, automatically stops. And then when you seek for meditation, mind will not bring those things which you don't want. Or the situation uh, doesn't need. So this will automatically happen. But if we react too much in the meditation, it's a technique used uh, for the uh, inner practice. So if you react too much, then the reaction will make the all phenomenon, uh, know, no, that uh, what is happening there, more stronger. Because your reaction is giving power, energizing those uh, visions again to come. Therefore, when we know whatever is happening, all those are connected to mind, then just withdraw from that, let it happen. So this is the drama type of meditation. We are not removing the objects there, but we are observing the object. Rango and Ratma. Now comes, uh, since we have started this drama example, now the next sutra says the spectators of this drama, the seers of this drama. Prekshagani Indriyani. Uh, prekchaka. Prekchaka means seer or spectator. So prekchakani indriyani. The sense organs uh, they are the spectators of the objects outside. So prekchakani indriyani. So the objects which are there in the mind those objects also has this uh, central enjoyment, you know, different type of like sound, touch and smell and all those are there. So these are connected to Hindriyas. Now, even though it is in the mind, but when we see it, we feel that this is actually is happening. Like when we see the dream, the dream, whatever happens, it is all the, the actions and reactions, everything is in the mind. There is only mind is working. But we feel it that we are what we are actually having it. The experience we are having it. Similarly, uh, in this meditation also, something will happen like this. So, Prekshakani Indriyani. 
so then let the uh, sense organs enjoy and do whatever it wants let them be free and the drama which is happening whatever uh, is uh, coming in uh, in the form uh, in the mind so let it happen with that and that is rakta gan indriya now this these indriyas they are they know how to experience the outside objects so they are practiced to uh, experience outside objects so we are, now we turn the indriyas inside now if they don't have any experience inside what would happen because previously they were experiencing outside objects before meditation or before this practice so now uh, we always say we turn indriyas inside sense organs inside like uh, in pratyahara what we call as pratyahara turning inward so if we turn inward the indriyas then what would happen to those indriyas they need some objects so these objects are given from the mind itself so the sound the the ear will hear the sound from mind like that the nose will uh, have the smell from the what is there already there so these are the objects the objects are given there all the five uh, objects are there so all the five uh, sense organs will get five objects but it is not actually they are getting eyes eyes are closed but you see the object so the object is seen in the mind but the the seer is eyes that not the seer that the mind is seeing it eyes is seeing it in outside object we open the eyes and see it but inside crossing the eyes something is happened that is seen there so whatever happened in the mind we are like we sometimes we say so i i can see what is going to happen now we say it. it means uh, that is very clear in your mind what is going to happen that is what the 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 sentence that what we say it means so i know what is going to happen but the knowing or seeing or experiencing not only out with outside objects but also the inside object the inside if this uh, sense organs turns back inside then those objects are uh, very what is the sucky form the sucky acid experience that this is gross experience compared to this those are sucky experience from those experience mind will again go inward it will go to the level of intellect so then we will think uh, we will start thinking about why it is happening so and what are the object and who am i seeing it and this all process will start inside so this is prakshakan indriyani rango antaratma anartak atma uh, because jatra dvitiya it is said dvitiya karah in the eighth sutra so the all drama is happening from there so if we have some interest to do this we can meditate for a long time because there is so many activities happening and the, the mind is working there and sense organs are there some experiences are created and everything is there but it is only for sometime it is not permanent it is to just to withdraw mind and sense organ from outside object to make the mind and sense organ interested in inside object so this is in between no intermediate state from here the sadhaka will as i said go to more deeper level of meditation more deep level of understanding so that level is called intellectual level 
there the objects are not in the form the form changes until mind works the objects as form the names and forms as uh, sensual experiences also different type of sensual experiences like we uh, see in the dream same thing is there but after that when mind is concentrated and it goes to more deeper level of understanding that is called intellectual level of meditation and then comes asmita which is called asmita the iness only uh, the object of meditation will be iness i so there is no object so after this what happens it comes in nas sutra ಜೀವಶಾದ ಧೀ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಹೈಯರ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಧೀ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ dharana so he become dharana so he vashat by the support of or in that higher intellect satva siddhi the realization of self the realization of the self the seer the drashta now the ultimate consciousness is not established in this way but he sees himself or the meditator is more depend on himself so objectification or seeing the objects are not there so that uh, that level is gone now in a different level that is sattva siddhi so sattva has many meanings sat means existence sattva means the stage of existence so that existence is nothing but the consciousness itself therefore we can say sattva is a purest form of experience and existence sattva in this level so realization of that sattva so who was seeing all this who was meditating who was seeing the outside object so he is the sattva that self is sattva divasa divasa sattva sattva so he can be translated as wisdom or uh, clear knowledge higher intellect after this meditation because the normal intellect does not need any meditation but this intellect needs meditation this is after meditation uh, when the mind is concentrated to one point so that uh, that is the experience is here so divasha sattva siddhi now the drama is over now he is not seeing any drama there or any uh, what is it, the forms there the forms are gone but uh, through this through this uh, feeling or experience of this intellect the concentrated mind we can have all the experiences of higher level that is swarupa uh, siddhi so the self is experienced through this intellect the higher level of intellect in this intellect uh, we have the intuition special knowledge the spiritual intuition at so this level the knowledge is called spiritual intuition because one pointedness gives uh, the intuition uh, intuition you know that that type of knowledge you know what is intuition intuition is conditionless so without condition you know what is going to happen 
and what already you experienced it will come as as a reflection in the mind so that knowledge is will occur here the jiva shat sattva shuddhi there are so many other experiences connected to this now the next sutra is continuing with this experience so once this once the sattva shuddhi the knowledge of self or this higher intellect the higher intuition is achieved then siddha swatantra bhava ha so swatantra bhava the power of absolute freedom complete freedom is experience freedom of knowledge freedom of action is experience with it so what does it mean now with our mind and intellect we are not free that we know the body mind and intellect when they work together we are not free because we have we have to follow the thought process accordingly we act but after this stage of this jiva uh, sha sattva siddhi experience so this sadhaka gets the freedom of knowledge the siddha swatantra bhava then whatever he wants to do or the thought comes to him will happen so the desire will happen as we saw in the last chapter the first chapter the last part whatever he thinks will happen only those thoughts will come to him which is going to happen this is a special speciality of intuition we all have actually we all have intuition intuitive knowledge we have but we are unable to use those we are believing in conscious mind more than the intuitive mind we are more dependent on this conscious mind therefore we are in bondage if we change this uh, dependency to intuition mind the intuitive mind that more for because the intuitive mind never goes wrong this is after meditation we reach there But what we have today is like no whenever we act uh, we have some thoughts and we act on that we get some informations some extra informations but uh, after that information when we get again we will think about that again we uh, connect with the outside objects or uh, that we will put some logic we put some logic on intuition then the character of intuition is gone the purity of intuition is gone because logic doesn't work with intuition so therefore we are unable to uh, connect the intuition with our daily work so intuitive knowledge is very special so he gets this intuitive knowledge so siddha swatantra bhava the swatantra bhava bhava can be appear or experience appearing or experience is called bhava siddha swatantra bhava freedom of knowledge yatha tatra tatha nyatra this uh, knowledge what he got by this meditation he can use that knowledge for himself as well as for others so yatha tatra tatha anyatra 
as in his own case, or his own body mind complex, he can use others' mind. He can give knowledge to others. Now we are trying to control our mind and concentrate our mind. So once our mind is concentrated, if we have some control over our mind, we can control others' mind by our own thoughts. So this is how the uh, people who practice all this hypnotism uh, and all those practice that is what they do. They have these techniques. They practice their own first. They do all the experiments in their own mind and get the idea how it works. And then they use the others. So they have different types of meditations. Like we have meditations, we also have meditation, non meditation techniques and all those. So this will happen to him. Yatha tatra. Yatha tatra tatha anyatra. So as in as his own case, he can use all those. Because the experience, the mental experience, is same in all bodies. I have the experience of pain or happiness, the same experience of pain or happiness others also have. But maybe the object uh, differ in each person, but the experience is the same, like uh, physically and mentally. The objects are different because uh, according to their karma, sanskaras, the objects appear. The objects are different, but the experience is the same. Therefore, if I know my mind, how my mind works, how my mind, my uh, my emotions appear and come and uh, do all these uh, actions. So similarly, I can uh, know uh, this is uh, what is happening to other minds too. So this technique is used. So, up to this point, uh, Sutras uh, went on discussing the different uh, effects of the meditation in different levels. Now, about the source of universe, again taking the Shakti Chakras, the source of universe. Now, from where this intuitive knowledge comes, how the mind works? How this yogi, the practitioners, get all these special abilities? The source of that. Bijavadhanam. So Sutra says he should be very much aware or attentive about the Parashakti. The supernatural power, the source of all this power. It means consciousness. Conscious Chaitanya Matma, we started from there. The consciousness is the main source. So Bija Avadhanam. Bija means the origin or the seed from where everything comes. Avadhanam is a special kind of attention. Uh, Bija Vadhanam, the source of universe. That is Bija. When we see in the universal level, the active form of consciousness. This Bija can be called the active form of consciousness. Why I say sometimes active form and sometimes the potential form? Uh, no, because the active form of consciousness is known. And the passive form or the potential state of consciousness is not known. So whatever we know as consciousness now, we are talking about consciousness and I am conscious. So this is active form of consciousness. It has, uh, it, is, it is reflected in mind or it has some activity. So activity is uh, applied there but activity is there. So this active form of consciousness is called Bija. 
that is the, from where the where everything comes out the source of universe or of source of thought or source of uh, intellect source of intuitive knowledge everything that based on that uh, potential form is uh, neutral but you will not have any special experience connected to that so when uh, this uh, act all the actions are stopped what you experience is potential form or the actionless form of consciousness sankhya same same so pure pure consciousness we call it pure consciousness there is no particular name his name is chit the chit is uh, you know you know the chit chaitanya and chetana the so all these words are there we have learned that differences difference between all these the chit is the purest form chiti or chit is called the purest form of consciousness it is not active the chaitanya when it comes in the form of chaitanya it is active active consciousness it means it can produce thoughts it can produce siddhis it can produce intuitive knowledge it will bring all these special qualities through that so he says you have to remember always this uh, uh, the active form of consciousness in the form of the source of creation as the source of creation that's the bijavatar shakti so ultimately the uh, supreme power that we call as uh, divine mother uh, in the, this shaiva uh, siddhanta they call it divine mother the shakti chakra right this type mentioned no? this is called shakti chakra so it is everything is formed from there many different uh, powers so we have physical power and mental power like that the different kinds of power and so okay we stop here we take next sutra so now uh, some sutras are on this discussion in the higher level of this consciousness the bija avadhana when we have a thought we can trace that thought this is another technique of meditation so like we are sitting quietly one thought came just take that thought and trace that from where it came why this thought brought this object then you go beyond that then you will have find some some other thought connected to this again take that then it is very interesting then it go long way we don't know how it came now now just now i talked about this how this came to me because uh, i we were discussing about the source so the word source brought this thought to me that there is a another technique we can use tracing the Thought, source so like that it goes so you know why it came because we were discussing that so when i am talking uh, i have some uh, you know objects in my mind i try to communicate those objects with some words to you and uh, sometimes that is completely coming out sometimes is not and in, in any case it is like that why because the second level of that thought is not connected to the conscious mind now i have to think why i uh, spoke like that i spoke already i spoke now i have to think about why i spoke so then you will find some reason there so that reason is uh, unseen when i talk so that it means the reason is before and the effect is after that always is like cause before and effect is after but cause is not seen the effect is there therefore if we practice finding out the cause of thought process you have full control over your mind because you will connect everything there and your memory level will increase and receptivity will increase 
I do what you call as I do you do. Because you always connect many things with the source. So let no thought come and just appear and go. If thought comes, thought should be valued. And see what is happening. It may be good thought or bad thought, let it be anything. But as a practice, take it. Another technique is if you have time, when you have, you have no job, no duty to do. So from morning to evening, take three or four parts. So morning towards and even uh, midday towards like that. Count the thoughts. Counting. So just sit there simply and whatever comes one, two, three, four, five, like that. It is very interesting. And then over uh, one day you will be not succeed. But after that, slowly you can improve and uh, uh, actually count how many thoughts appear on no normal day. You are doing some special work, some something, some something. So then these thoughts can be categorized, the groups of the thoughts. And these thoughts are connected to spirituality, these thoughts are good, these thoughts are bad. And then sattva and raja and tama, eh, it's all this. Like I saw, uh, we discussed, the productive thoughts, uh, some uh, something, some product, some production, something is there. Uh, some thoughts are just like that. Nothing to do with our action. You can count all those, all those and find out from where it comes and the source is not, then the actual source. The Lija Avastha, the power of that, will be not like that. For that, uh, we will discuss in the next uh, sutra. There are some uh, hints of this. Om Purnamataha Purnamitam Purnat Purnamudasyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Avasishyate Om Shanti Shanti